Welcome to our second lesson about sketch options. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about configuring and customizing your sketch environment via the Document Settings dialog window on the Tools tab, Options panel. In our previous lesson, we covered the application-wide settings. The settings in the Document Settings editor affect your current file only. The available options will depend upon which type of file you're working with, standard or sheet metal part, drawing document, presentation document, assembly, etc. To edit the document settings for a part file, click Document Settings while you've got a part open. Let's begin by creating a new part document. Back to the Tools tab, Options panel, and now the Document Settings tool is active. Here's the Document Settings editor. Let's go to the Sketch tab. On the right, we can adjust the grid display, which we spoke of briefly in our last lesson. In the Application Options Editor, you can enable or disable the grid display as well as the Snap to Grid function. In this editor, you can set the number of snaps per minor grid line. That's the spacing between the snap points. Currently, the display is set to two snaps per minor grid line. That means if Snap to Grid Lines is checked in the Application Options Editor, the cursor is going to snap twice per minor grid line. Let's check the Application Options Editor just to make sure that we've enabled these functions. Application Options, Sketch tab, Grid Lines and Minor Grid Lines are checked as well as Snap to Grid. Let's close the Application Options dialog window and let's return to the Document Settings Editor. Back to the Sketch tab. Currently, we have what's called a major line, or a line of heavier weight, that appears every eight minor lines. We adjust this up or down as required. Let's count the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. In the Snap Spacing section, we can set the snap spacing to unique values for the X and Y axes. Below, we've got Line Weight Display Options. These settings affect the on-screen display of your lines, not your printouts. We check this box to enable the display of unique line weights. You set actual line weights in the Sketch Properties toolbar, which you access via the Sketch tab, Format panel. Sketch, let's expand the flyout of the Format panel. Here's the Sketch Properties palette. It's a floating palette which lets us override default settings of color, line type, and line weight. Let's return to the Tools tab and launch the Document Settings Editor again. If Display True Line Weights is selected, you'll see actual line weights in the Sketch Properties palette. Let me move the Document Settings Editor so you can see the Sketch Properties palette. If you select Display Line Weights by range, the line weights will display according to values you enter here. They're used to calculate the display scale. The values for the smallest line are entered on the left, and the values for the heaviest line are entered to the far right. Here I enter a value in inches, and that's because my default unit of measurement for this document is inches. 3D Sketch, Auto Bend Radius. Here's where we set the bend radius in inches that determines how Inventor is going to round the corner bends for 3D sketches. We activate or suppress the auto bend radius via the Application Options Editor, the Sketch tab. As we discussed in our previous lesson, it's the last option down here below. Let's cancel out of the Application Options Editor and return to the Document Settings Editor. We don't have the option to import and export our settings here. However, you can adjust the settings and then save the part as a template, which you can then use later on. Let's cancel out of the Document Settings Editor. And let's finish the sketch. Right click, finish sketch. Now let's click on the application menu. Scroll down to save as. And let's select save copy as template. And let's cancel out of this dialog window for now. Let's go back to the tools tab now. Return to the document settings editor. Sketch tab. We'd mentioned here that units display in their default setting of inches. Let's go to the Units tab. It's from this tab that we set our default units of measurement for each document. Let's say I want my units of length to display as centimeters instead of inches. Select Centimeter from the drop-down menu, and let's apply and close. Activate Sketch 1 by double-clicking on it. Let's close the Sketch Properties palette, and take a front view. 
We'll just adjust the zoom a little bit too. This time, let's activate the circle tool. And here's our center point. Left click again to establish the radius. Now let's dimension the circle. Click on the circle and left click again to place the diameter dimension. Let's double click on the dimension. Our dimension displays in centimeters. Click OK to exit. Double click to open the dimension editor. Let's enter a value in inches. Type 5IN and press enter or click the check mark. Notice that our entry was automatically converted into centimeters even though it still appears in the edit dimension dialog window as 5 inches. Let's click OK to exit this window and accept the dimension. And let's finish the sketch. And this concludes our second lesson about sketch settings.